Hey everyone, coming to you with another episode of Data Science One. Uh, today, uh, I think the uh, the topic is a really interesting one. Uh, getting into to pandas and data tables, uh, I think this is is really fun because it feels like we're we're getting into data science um, that we've uh, we've spent a few lectures on uh, background knowledge and uh, and and we're really getting into it now. So uh, today's lecture, uh, I'm going to walk you through. Uh, the getting started tutorial from pandas, uh, reviewing a, a lot of material on this. Uh, I, I thought that this was the, the best way to get across the really important parts of pandas and, and why I think this is such an important tool that you all should be learning. Um, that said, I'm not going to go into extreme detail on all of the topics that they touch in the tutorial. Uh, I, I'm mostly here to uh, to show you what it is that you could possibly look up. Um, I, I don't expect you to remember uh, everything I show you word for word, but be able to, to uh, refer back to the documentation and online resources later. Um, that said, uh, if you uh, prefer to, to read things than to, to watch a video, uh, feel free to walk through this yourself. Um, I think that would be uh, would be extremely useful. Um, and even if you do watch this video, there, there's more content there that uh, that I won't touch on. Um, so uh, I I highly encourage that, and it's in the the recommended reading on Blackboard uh, as well. Um, the the content for today is is again mostly to uh, to to show you what Pandas has in store. Um, so the what what this will uh, be framed on uh, is the data frame. Uh, so the the data frame is the uh, kind of central object to pandas uh, and, and obviously to uh, to data and data science uh, in general. The the data frame uh, may look familiar to those of you uh, coming from uh, R or MATLAB or, or SQL backgrounds. Um, and kind of especially uh, given what we've talked about last lecture on uh, NumPy uh, vectors and arrays, uh, the core of the data frame uh, is, is a NumPy array. Um, and you can import this uh, from NumPy or export it back to NumPy. Um, but what, what really makes uh, pandas special and what we're going to focus on so much uh, is the uh, auxiliary features around this. Um, both the uh, the column and row uh, headings and, and indexes here, um, and and the, the, the features that, uh, that are built into pandas to let you uh, quickly and efficiently <clears throat> analyze data within them. And that's uh, essentially what we're going to go through today are, are some of the advantages um, uh, of the built-in features of having uh, a pandas data frame versus uh, just looking at, at raw data um, in, a, in a spreadsheet or in an array. Uh, the, the other nice thing about pandas that we'll go into in, uh, in pretty good depth today uh, is how the built-in features in pandas let you manipulate data. Um, so look at, uh, at certain rows or columns or entries in this data frame and, and do things to them that, that we might want to be doing in data science and that we'll certainly do uh, in future lectures. Uh, so hopefully uh, this is, is all uh, clear to you as, as a base um, for, for building on into our data science pipelines. Um, and, and I encourage you to, uh, to look through the documentation now, but, uh, but especially uh, come back to it throughout the semester as we get more and more hands-on into some of these, uh, some of these questions and, uh, and functions. So the uh, tutorial that I mentioned we'll be walking through has a, a handful of really nice examples. Uh, the, the first one that they dig into uh, is looking at passenger data from the Titanic. Um, the, uh, the, the basis of our data frame here uh, is uh, uh, the, the data um, in the columns name, age, and sex. Uh, and one way to uh, create a data frame is to uh, build a dictionary with the entries in each of those columns um, and, and put it together into the data frame function. Um, 
what that looks like here is a, is a, a data frame. Uh, you'll see lots of common abbreviations. So DF is uh, the, the stereotypical uh, abbreviation for data frame in pandas, uh, just like PD is the, the typical um, is the, the, the typical way to import pandas. Um, and in uh, and, and the, the data we see here, uh, hopefully looks really familiar to you. Uh, hopefully this looks like uh, what you've been used to seeing in any sort of spreadsheet or other uh, data centric or array centric um, programming language or program. So, uh, so in our data frame, we have uh, our entries uh, based off of the, the columns here and also on the rows. You'll, you'll see in our data frame that the rows are uh, by default indexed by number. Um, we'll, we'll come back to that uh, in a second here. Uh, but I, I want to talk about, <clears throat> excuse me, talk about each of the uh, columns in the data frame. Uh, so these uh, are, are the values for each one of our variables. Um, and, and together, the, uh, the, the variable column and all of its values we call a series in pandas. Um, again, with the analogies to uh, NumPy, think of this as a vector of entries for, uh, for a given variable uh, or a 1D array in NumPy. Um, with uh, with indexes um, like we normally have in pandas. Um, so a, a lot of what we're going to talk about today can be uh, thought of as functions on uh, both full data frames and on data series. Um, and we'll, we'll go back and forth between those um, in, in the next few minutes. Uh, so the, the series in particular are nice to work with uh, when you are uh, looking at a specific variable um, that, that you're interested in. Um, so uh, the, the syntax here is just the bracket indexing um, given the variable name. Uh, and, and this is a nice way to pull out uh, a series from a data frame. And, and you can save this, obviously, to a, a new variable and, and do manipulation just on that series without having to carry the rest of the data frame around with you. Uh, the nice thing about uh, both the, the data frame and series is that there's a ton of built-in functionality that we'll go through with this tutorial. Uh, one of the, the simple examples is that uh, a lot of the mathematical NumPy functions are available uh, for data frames and series. Uh, Pandas also has some built-in functionality on top of the, the standard calls that you might uh, be familiar with from NumPy. Um, one of the, the helpful ones is describe, which is a, a suite of NumPy uh, calls to different uh, descriptive, vari or descriptive uh, values uh, that you might, uh, might uh, care about when looking at the, the statistics of your data set. Um, this, uh, this is a, a nice way to, to get a feel for what your data looks like. Um, and we'll, we'll go into a couple other uh, examples of of how to get an idea of data here, but especially we'll, we'll go into that in more depth um, when we talk about uh, exploratory data analysis next time. So uh, the data in our data frame uh, will rarely actually be written in the way that we've shown uh, with the, the columns described as a, as a dictionary. Uh, more likely, we'll have far more data than would be reasonable to input manually. Um, and so we'll be uh, importing uh, our data via things like CSV files. Um, we, we won't go into a lot of detail here, but an important thing to note is that we can also uh, export uh, our manipulated data uh, the, the same way that we import it. Um, so the the Import uh, calls depend on what sort of uh, file you're coming from, um, but we'll often be using CSVs in this class, um, and it's uh, as simple as, uh, as calling the read CSV function. Uh, again, make sure that uh, you're, you're using the correct uh, local path to the, the data that you have stored on your machine. And uh, and just reading that file, uh, it converts it into a really nicely formatted pandas data table, uh, as you'd expect. Um, 
And, and you can see here that we've imported uh, 891 rows uh, just through that call. Um, and oftentimes we'll, we'll want to uh, look at data um, that, that we have in a very large data table. Uh, one way to get a, a nice feel for what some of your data looks like is to use the uh, head call, which uh, just shows you the, the top uh, few entries in your, um, in your data frame. Um, you can uh, specify a, a number or just use the defaults to show the, the first few. Uh, there are, are lots of other uh, summary statistics of data frames. Um, one that uh, is, is helpful for some of the things we'll do uh, next time uh, is the info, uh, info um, function call, uh, which tells you uh, about uh, some summary counts of your data uh, as well as types. Uh, one of the things we'll notice here uh, is the non-null count. Um, we'll, we'll talk about uh, filling in missing data and how to, to work with null entries later on in the semester. Um, but uh, but it's, it's important to note here that uh, while there are 891 total entries, some of them don't have, uh, for example, uh, cabin features, uh, embarked, and, and age features, um, meaning that any uh, analysis that we do on those features, we'll have to consider um, how we treat uh, non-null entries, or, or sorry, non-present uh, non entries um, that just have null values. So uh, getting into manipulating data within the data frame, um, one of the, the simplest and, and most frequent things we'll do uh, is look at uh, specific columns and, and features. Um, and, and we uh, already mentioned this before, uh, but to, to reiterate, the bracket uh, syntax is, is how we'll pull out uh, specific features of our data set. Uh, now, most of, uh, of the pandas um, calls are really nicely scalable. Uh, so one of the things we can do is instead of passing in uh, single variables, we can pass in uh, lists of, of variables of col column names here, um, which will pull out uh, a subset of our data frame uh, using uh, the, or that, that includes the full list of features that, that we've specified here. Uh, another way that we can pull out data within a data frame is to look at specific rows. Um, and, and this is uh, something that is a little bit harder to do without some of the uh, added benefits of pandas. Um, and you'll see uh, it's starting to feel a little bit more data science-y. Um, so the, the way that we can do this uh, is through a, a conditional expression. Um, so, uh, so what we have here is a Boolean statement inside of our brackets. Um, and you can see here that this statement is asking uh, when the series uh, uh, for the feature age is greater than 35. Uh, so what, uh, what that little Boolean expression inside of, uh, inside of our um, bracketing indexing here will do is it will spit out um, a, a vector of uh, the size of our data set, 891, I believe here, uh, of true-false statements, uh, whether or not the, uh, the row um, that, uh, that uh, is, is for that index uh, has an age uh, greater than 35, whether it, uh, whether it satisfies that, uh, that uh, Boolean statement. Um, and if it does, if it's true, then uh, that row will be selected in our subset. Um, and, and we can use that to uh, look at specific subsets of our data frame. Uh, in this case, uh, reassigning this to a, a new data frame uh, of just the, the passengers who are above 35. Uh, we can uh, do this for multiple uh, Boolean statements. Um, and, and here we have a, a, a case where we're looking for um, the combination of uh, folks who are in passenger class two or in passenger class three. 
Um, so your, your standard uh, Boolean logic operators uh, can be used to build expressions that are as long as, as you might want to go um, to find more and more specific or, or more and more general um, subsets of your data that, that you want to pull out for a specific analysis. Um, now I'll note that, uh, that this can sometimes get unwieldy as you have lots of Boolean statements in your uh, in your conditional uh, expression, uh, a few things to note um, for for best practices. Uh, one is uh, that you should make sure uh, you're putting parentheses around uh, each of the specific uh, series uh, Boolean statements that, that you're making. Um, for example, you see the parentheses around uh, the passenger class equals two and around passenger class equals three. Uh, the other thing is, uh, is noting that we're using um, not the uh, plain text uh, Python operators, uh, which are Boolean operators, uh, but we're actually using uh, the, the bitwise version of those operators in Python, uh, which for OR is the uh, vertical line and for AND is the ampersand. Um, so that's a, a common point of, of confusion. Um, that it will lead to uh, to you getting an error when you try and uh, and put together these uh, these uh, multiple conditional statements. Uh, more generally, there are uh, often, or, or maybe even more specifically, uh, there are often uh, uh, calls that we can make to built-in uh, Python or Python and pandas functions uh, that can be a little bit more human readable. Uh, so this uh, is in um, is a, a a boolean operator um, in uh, in pandas um, that will uh, produce the the same output as we saw in the the last slide, um, but uh, is much easier to interpret as you're going through your code um, and is is much easier to understand if you're reading someone else's code. Uh, so it's it's suggested that you uh, you look through um, some of these examples and, and try to use them whenever possible. Um, that uh, that things like uh, not uh, not a number uh, will will come up often as uh, as uh, built-ins that that you'll want to use. Uh, again, uh, I'm not trying to uh, enumerate all of the possibilities here. Uh, just suggest things that you can go and look up uh, on your own as as necessary. Uh, he, actually, here's the uh, the example of uh, not uh, a number. Um, so uh, we we mentioned before that the age uh, feature uh, had some examples where uh, the the entry wasn't uh, put in correctly or wasn't known. Uh, this will happen a, a ton as we start to work with real data, um, and uh, the not uh, na. Uh, function is a, a great way to look for the subset of your data frame um, that has a valid entry for a, a specific um, column or feature. Uh, we can be uh, even more specific as we start to, to combine these, this uh, row selection and column selection into uh, pulling out uh, just a, a combination of uh, specific entries and values uh, that we're interested in. So uh, the, the, there are a few ways to do this. Um, the dot uh, location or dot loc uh, function uh, is one to index both the uh, the rows and the columns. Uh, the the first uh, argument is your uh, rows and the uh, second argument is your columns. Uh, so you, you can see here that we've, uh, we've asked for the rows where uh, the age is above 35, uh, but just for the name column here. Um, and it spits out, uh, as you see, uh, a, a very nice um, uh, data frame that, that it just includes the data that you actually care about. Um, so going from, uh, from huge unwieldy data sets to um, to being able to interrogate uh, the things related to your question is, is really helpful. Uh, a similar uh, related 
uh, indexing function is the uh, i location or integer location uh, dot i l o c um, that uh, that lets you specify which uh, row numbers and what column numbers you're interested in um, rather than uh, than indexing by the names. Um, that's why this is called the integer location. Uh, this is uh, most helpful, I, I found, when you're doing loops through your data frame, um, that uh, it's often easier to, uh, to do those numerically than to go through uh, actual values. Um, but this is, a, it is a, a handy thing to know in general. It's uh, also good to, to note that uh, when we're using um, these uh, indexes, uh, it uh, shows you the actual subset of your uh, specific data frame. Uh, so you can go in and uh, do assignment here. It, it doesn't uh, just show a copy. Um, so, uh, so for example, uh, pulling out our subset of, um, of uh, cells, uh, we're able to, um, to reassign them. And in the uh, original data frame, uh, that reassignment is, is shown here. OK, getting into, uh, into some of the fun visualizations, uh, Pandas uh, has a, a whole bunch of, of really nice uh, plotting features uh, that are built on top of matplotlib um, that will let us uh, quickly and, and hopefully, uh, hopefully efficiently uh, show what we want to see in the data. Um, this, uh, this uses uh, all, everything you've learned so far about matplotlib and, and will learn. Um, and, and I'll say that uh, frequently I still uh, end up using uh, matplotlib by itself uh, when creating more complex visualizations. Um, but uh, but the, the pandas um, calls here are a nice way to quickly do things like exploratory data analysis. Uh, so uh, we'll shift to uh, a slightly different data set uh, for, for this example. Um, this is uh, one about uh, air quality from uh, a few different uh, observation stations. Um, and you can see here with, uh, with one really simple line of code, uh, we can get uh, default uh, plots that, that look really nice uh, using the column and row uh, labels uh, as um, as uh, as nice legend and axi labels uh, in our plots, um, differentiating by the the different variables and features that you might want to be plotting, um, and uh, all in all, creating a, a pretty quick and helpful visualization uh, just with uh, just with this one line of code. Uh, we can uh, do this on a series, uh, the same way uh, many of our other pandas functions could uh, could be applied to either the full data frame or just a series. Um, here, showing the the same thing, plotting just uh, a single feature. Now there are lots and lots of uh, types of plots that are available in uh, in pandas. Uh, most of what we're able to do in matplotlib. Um, so I'll leave you to uh, explore those on your own um, rather than, than going into detail about uh, the, the calls for each one, um, but just noting that, uh, that they're all uh, really helpful for uh, quickly, um, quickly uh, showing your data and, and also for, for making sure that you understand um, you know, what exactly it is that, that you're plotting, um, given that the, the labels and, and uh, and legends uh, are ad automatically made uh, based off of your data frame. Uh, it takes just uh, one step out of uh, the error-prone uh, human coding. Uh, how can we uh, create new columns? Uh, this is something we'll get into uh, when we talk about feature engineering. Um, and the, the answer here is, is quite simple. Um, just like we uh, indexed uh, columns with the square brackets uh, and the column name, uh, we can use that same, uh, that, that same format uh, on the left side of the equal sign to uh, assign 
uh, values to um, to that uh, that feature. And if that feature uh, doesn't exist, if if there is no column by that name, pandas will automatically create a new one, uh, which is is really nice. Um, you can see uh, see here that. Uh, since we're uh, pulling out uh, vectors or uh, NumPy arrays from our series um, of uh, air quality at the London station, um, that we can apply uh, vectorized uh, transformations on that data frame and on that series uh, to give us the, the new series, again, in a vectorized format that, that plugs right back into our data frame. Um, so this is a is really simple and, and easy to use. Uh, another thing that we might uh, care about doing are uh, looking at statistics. Uh, so uh, in our uh, especially exploratory data analysis, but but throughout um, throughout some of the things we'll do this semester, uh, pulling out stats is a, a, a thing that, that we'll rely on quite a bit. Uh, like we alluded to at the beginning of the lecture, uh, there are lots of built-in functions on series or on data frames that, that let us do this uh, quite efficiently. Um, but, uh, but there are some uh, slightly uh, more advanced ways of, um, of grouping together categories that, uh, that, that I think uh, uh, go quite a bit beyond um, what, uh, what, what we've seen before. Uh, so the, the group by call in particular uh, is one uh, that uh, it takes a, a little bit to, to get your head around. Uh, so I suggest you uh, you do some reading on your own about this uh, if you haven't used uh, group by before, but it's, a, it's an incredibly useful feature uh, once you understand what it does. Um, so the, the group by uh, will take a, uh, a column and uh, and show you the summary statistic uh, of that column or of that feature, um, either by itself or, or here uh, relative to all of the, the other features um, in, your, in your data frame. Uh, so uh, to, to unpack this just a little bit, the uh, dot group by sex uh, suggests that we are looking at um, each of the possible entries in that column, which here is just male or female um, in, in this particular uh, data set. Um, and, uh, and so by, uh, by specifying what summary statistic we want to be uh, using when we group by, uh, in this case, we, we've asked for the mean, uh, it'll show us the mean passenger ID for uh, the male or female passengers. It'll show us uh, the mean uh, survival rate uh, of male or female passengers. Uh, you see a, a, a stark difference here in, in, in this one. Um, uh, the, the mean age and, and so on and so forth. Um, and, and just like uh, there are lots of uh, summary statistics you could use, there are lots of, of ways to, to group by. You could group by, uh, so, so the, the group by uh, will and temporarily make a data frame uh, or, or a series uh, for each combination of uh, of the the new index in this case sex uh, and the columns uh, like uh, passenger class or age um, and, and by applying the mean function here we've we've pulled out the mean of that uh, that temporary data series. Um, but we could, for example, ask for the maximum value in that series. We could ask for the first value in that series. Um, we could ask for the, the, the count, the standard deviation, any of the, the summary statistics um, that, uh, that you could, uh, you could uh, care about here. And, and depending on uh, the project, uh, finding out, for example, uh, you know, when the earliest example of uh, of some group by function happen using the the first call uh, could be really important, or finding out uh, finding out the the max um, uh, of of these combinations of two columns um, uh, can can be can be really uh, really helpful. Uh, we can also uh, like before pass in lists into the group by function. Um, 
which we'll do uh, essentially a nested group by. Uh, so here we've passed uh, first uh, grouping by sex and then grouping by passenger class. Um, and so you can see uh, we have uh, the example of each uh, of the uh, passenger classes broken down by male or female passengers. Um, and then rather than showing the whole data frame here, uh, we've uh, looked at, at just a specific uh, specific uh, column or feature. So this is uh, showing how the fare varies by the the class and the um, and the the sex, um, which uh, which which you can see uh, varies quite a bit here. Um, it, it, and I think uh, an interesting an interesting uh, patterning. So uh, that uh, that. Group by is a nice way to uh, to condense a data frame. Kind of looking at the opposite direction, how to uh, expand a data frame to pull in data from other sources. Um, here we'll uh, we'll go back to our air quality uh, example um, and and look at uh, two different uh, different data sets for um, different parameters of our. Um, of the of air quality here, um, the simplest way to combine those uh, would just be to do uh, a straightforward concatenation, um, like like you might expect uh, to to put uh, two arrays together. Um, Pandas has built-in function uh, that, that lets you stack the arrays on top of each other, um, assuming that they have uh, the the same columns. Uh, those columns will will nicely match up with each other. Um, if not, you might get uh, missing entries or, or not a number of values uh, in the, the columns that, that weren't present in some data sets but were present in others. Um, maybe uh, more useful and, and again a little bit trickier to, to get your head around is joining tables by ID. Uh, so uh, in this case, uh, I, I promise that the, the code is simpler than the picture here. Um, but the the idea here is that uh, we might have uh, specific um, specific uh, IDs, um, indexes, or or uh, or features that are shared between uh, two different uh, data sets, and and you might want uh, instead of multiple entries for for those uh, those two data sets when they get merged together uh, you might just want uh, additional columns based off of the same uh, index or, or in this case the same location um, since we're merging on the location um, feature so uh, so what this says is uh, is since our two data sets were uh, two different uh, air quality measures uh, taken at, uh, at, at many of the same locations um, this uh, this looks for uh, a location in one data set, um, and and if it it sees that uh, sees the same location in both data sets, it'll merge the two rows together uh, to to be on the the same row uh, in your combined data set. Um, you you can obviously see why this is is really helpful for uh, for bringing in uh, features off of the the same underlying data. Um, when, when asking a question that involves information from multiple sources, uh, as uh, many of you I think will do in your projects, um, but uh, but this one also takes a, a little bit of time and practice to to get used to. Um, so uh, for for the sake of time, uh, I'll, I'll cut it off here um, and just say that, that hopefully this was helpful for showing uh, some of the things that uh, that you can do in pandas. Uh, there are uh, a lot more examples of the things that uh, that I've shown so far um, that you can read in the tutorial or, or you can find in, in some of the other uh, sources that, that are posted on Blackboard. Um, there are also lots of other built-in features uh, that, that you've seen. Pandas is built on NumPy and, and Matplotlib and, and lots of uh, uh, standard Python features too. Um, and so we'll we'll get into some of those uh, more specific topics um, in the appropriate lectures uh, throughout the semester instead of trying to pile it all onto you uh, right here up front. Um, but uh, but again, I, I highly suggest uh, the the readings and the documentation. Um, 
And, and I hope this was helpful in, in just kind of giving you a, a broad idea and uh, an inspiration of what to go uh, look up um, on your own or as you uh, find that, that there are things you need to do or want to do uh, as part of your assignments and projects. Um, that's, uh, that's all I have for today. Um, so uh, happy reading and uh, I'll, uh, I'll see you next time.